The Vern Spratt Stoneworks is a site in Menifee County. It's made out of stone, a series of alignments or walls, and small stone mounds on the side of a, of a hill. Um, there isn't any mortar between the rocks. In fact, when you go there, uh, the rocks are look more like boulders. They don't look like they've been shaped in any way, covered with moss. Um, and it's difficult to get a sense of whether there's any kind of pattern to the alignment of the stone walls. Uh, several years ago, um, there was some destruction to the stone walls. There's a couple of places where there's breaks in the walls that would not have been there um, naturally. Um, a couple of bulldozers came through. Um, and I think part of the reason why it's difficult to get a sense of the, of the site has to do with the fact that it's in woods, and so you can't get a good visual perspective on the place. Nevertheless, um, stone alignments and stone mounds uh, are, are the kind of native sites that occur really all over the middle Ohio Valley, small stone mounds and these stone alignments. Um, there hasn't been any archaeological excavation or particularistic research done at the Spratt Stoneworks, so it's kind of difficult for us to know uh, exactly how old the site is. But comparing it to other sites that are similar, stone mounds and these alignments, uh, suggests to us that uh, it was built, the mounds and the earthworks or the mounds and the alignments were built during the woodland period. The woodland period uh, goes from about 1000 BC to 1000 AD in Kentucky. And um, the woodland peoples in general were a, a hunting, gathering, and gardening people. And they were the ones who built so many of the obvious mounds in uh, central Kentucky. It's possible that uh, the Spratt stoneworks in Menifee County, those small stone mounds and the stone alignments, could have been built by woodland peoples who lived in eastern Kentucky who just chose to use stones rather than earth, you know, for their um, uh, material. But the stone mounds at, at Spratt Stoneworks aren't as big as these earthen mounds in central Kentucky. And so I think it's probably likely that they didn't function in exactly the same way. The Spratt Stoneworks were listed in the National Register of Historic Places in 1984. Uh, the part of the site that is listed in the register are the small stone mounds and the stone alignments. But there are rock shelters nearby. Not surprisingly, there's rock shelters you know, all over um, eastern Kentucky. Menifee County is very famous, actually, for its rock shelters. Um, and there are some rocks that um, have uh, scratches or, or etchings on them. Uh, these particular rocks near the Spratt Stoneworks are not what we refer to as petroglyphs or stone pictures that are found all over eastern Kentucky. They look like um, geometric designs or turkey tracks, sometimes uh, animal prints, paw prints, that kind of stuff. Um, the scratches on the rocks nearby the Spratt Stoneworks are are probably natural. There's, it's difficult to say for sure that they're human-made. Now, if the people who made Spratt Stoneworks lived near Spratt Stoneworks, it's entirely likely that they lived in those rock shelters. Rock shelters throughout eastern Kentucky were used by native peoples for thousands of years. My theory is this. If you got archaeology on you and don't tell people, they'll never know. Up this creek in one place, we found a date on top of rock 1753. That's even before Daniel Boone and them even got in Kentucky. And all I'm trying to do, I don't want no money out of nothing. All I'm trying to do is impress on people's minds that really there's more archaeology here than they'll go anywhere from time.
the Gateskill Mound is another site that is um, on the National Register of Historic Places. It's also Mr. Gateskill, who lives there in Mount Sterling, uh, has, is a participant in the Kentucky Archaeological Registry program because he feels the site needs to be preserved. Um, he has a wonderful picture uh, from the early 1900s of the mound completely planted in tobacco with two people standing out in the field. They look like little teeny midgets. Um, we're used to today seeing these mounds all in grass or something, but this is back then when they... The Gateskill Mound um, is a large loaf-shaped mound that would have been built by the Adena people sometime 100 years either side of the time of Christ. Um, the Gateskill Mound um, has been um, impacted by looting in a couple of instances. Um, and there are two tablets that have come from the Gateskill Mound with the um, style of figures that are on other mound tablets that have been found in the Adena culture area, which includes Central Kentucky, Western West Virginia, and, um, and Ohio. When you walk up on one of those mounds, knowing what you know about how these mounds functioned within the culture of these people, um, I personally get um, a sense of connection with the past that can really only be um, felt through actual things being there and still preserved and things to, to actually sense. I know, based on the research that I have done and the study that I have done in Kentucky archaeology over these years, I know that in that mound are uh, the remains of the people who once lived here. They called Central Kentucky home just like I do. They had a different way of, of perceiving the world. They buried people in a different way. Their ceremonies were different. Their houses were built in a different way. But they were hunters and gatherers and gardeners, and I consider myself a gardener. The fact that the mound is preserved there, still there to see, that it has not been bulldozed, it's been nicked, it's been uh, just barely touched by a road and, and by the um, parking lot, but the fact that that mound is still there stands in testimony for the way those people live. We can't interview them. We don't know what they really called themselves because we call them Adena, but their mounds are still here through the interests of local people who are, want to preserve the past. And that's, you know, that's a way that we can understand the diversity of, of human life in our own home. These people may not be um, biologically or ethnically connected to many of us because so many of us have uh, European or African ancestry. But we all live in the same place. We live in their home. They lived in our home. And the, the, the connection uh, of the past and the present that those mounds represent, you know, is just cannot be denied. Hey everybody, I'm Chip Holston, your host for Kentucky Life. Now, if you like that story, you want to explore more of Kentucky, here's how you do it. Click right here to see more stories from our show.